What's going on, guys? Today, I want to explain why your boy finally decided to get a belt. But before I do so, I want to let you know that you don't actually need to get a belt. This piece of equipment right here is 100% optional. You're not going to get injured if you don't use a belt. You're not going to be weak if you don't use a belt. I trained beltless for about eight years, going on nine, and I had no problems. So if you don't want to get a belt, be my guest. I've made tons of videos explaining the benefits of beltless training. In some cases, it might even be better. So just keep doing you. Uh, that said, if you are interested in belts, I want to give you an overview of what the benefits are and explain like all the possible uses in uh, what you could do with it. So let's break this down. First of all, as you can see right here, I decided to get a 13 millimeter insert belt. Now I know there's a lot of debate between the 10 millimeter and the 13 millimeter, but I got 13 millimeter because it's thicker. And I believe that once you break in it, it's going to be more beneficial, especially when we talk about overload training. Now, I mainly got this fucker for overload training because I feel that it's going to add significant poundages to my lift while keeping me injury free in the process. You see, I set a new goal upon myself, which I would like to achieve. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I want to rack pull above the knee 1500 pounds. 1500. Zero, zero. Why 1500? Because Mike Machine Bruce, who is a confirmed 100% natural guy, did 1500 and he could have done more on top of that. So I want to see if I can get to that type of level. So I'm going to be raising my standards and reaching new levels of strength. And I think that once I get 1500, my traps are going to be even bigger. They're going to be fucking yoked to the max. So I mainly got this fucker for overload training. I really think it's going to help because what you have to understand is that a belt, it just gives you intra-abdominal pressure additional, right? You're pressing against this thing. You're flexing against your abs and it makes you tighter. It makes you tighter and you, you can get some, uh, some poundages out of it too. And that's another thing, right? Like a week or two ago, I used my friend's shitty belt, like a shit fucking belt, really, really old. And it must have added like 20 to 40 pounds off my pull, like this, which is fucking crazy, man. It added 20 to 40 pounds off my pull while enhancing recovery. I'm not even joking. Usually if I would attempt to lift like that, I'd be a little bit tired, right? But the next day I felt perfectly fine. My friend, on the other hand, who was belless, he felt a little bit more achy than me. So I think that the belt also has recovery benefits. If it allows you to recover better, why not use it? Like, I think something like this would be great for Bulgarian light. You know, training every single day with a belt, it probably is better for recovery. So, so I got this thing because I'm thinking about longevity. I'm thinking about longevity. I'm thinking about recovery. I'm thinking about maximum performance. And keep in mind, I'm a fucking psychopath when it comes to the gym. I am addicted to the iron. I fucking love this stuff. And uh, I'm going to do what it takes to reach elite levels of strength. So if using a belt is all I need to do that, if, if a belt adds 20 to 40 pounds to my lift like this, why would I not use it? Why would I not use it if it adds poundage just to my lift like this and it makes my recovery that much better? Like to me, it's only common sense. On top of that, I've also found that using this thing on the bench press helps with tightness. Did you know that you could use a belt while you bench? It's crazy, but it works. All you got to do is you put this thing on. You don't put it on too tight or else you're not going to be able to breathe. And it makes it like you can brace so much better. You feel much tighter during the bench and your ass does not come off the bench. When you have a belt on, it makes it very hard for your ass to come off the bench. So it teaches you how to use leg drive the proper way. It teaches you how to brace correctly. I'm telling you, this makes all the difference in the bench. So I'll be using this a lot for heavy overload training. Uh, another benefit that I've heard is that apparently belts can help with hernias. Apparently, if you go beltless long enough and you're lifting really, really heavy weight, you have a higher risk of uh, blowing out your guts, you know, and apparently a belt keeps all that in. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if that's bro science. Like, I, I really, I'm not qualified enough to speak on the subject, but if that's true, then fucking great. But yeah, that's kind of what a belt does. It's not magical. Uh, at the end of the day, like, if you are rounding your lower back, if you have bad technique, you're still going to fuck your shit up. So that's why a belt list could still be very beneficial. But I'm using this thing for intra-abdominal pressure, man. Like, it's a 13 millimeter. Like I said, it's the thickest tension. I believe that if you're going to get a belt, go with the best. Don't buy those cheap, like, four-inch belts. Get something good, minimum 10 millimeter uh, or 13, okay? And I think you're going to be good. So intra-abdominal pressure means more overload, uh, which means uh, more yoke. And of course, uh, it adds pounds just to my lift. I shit you not, guys. It must have added 20 to 40 pounds to my deadlift. Like this. Like that fucking fast. So, and, and what's crazy is that the behind the back deadlift is very, very hard off the bottom. So if I can get that little bit of extra explosion from using a belt... I could reach really, really elite numbers. So I think this is going to be the game changer for me. Again, like I said, never used one in eight years. I'm a very advanced lifter. I have a lot of experience. Uh, even if I take off the belt, I'm perfectly fine. And like I said, this is a 100% optional piece of equipment. And I still stand by my statements that beltless training is badass as fuck. You're not going to get hurt with beltless training, provided that you use good form. And it's not going to harm you in a negative way. The only thing is there's less intra-abdominal pressure, right? It might impede your recovery a little bit. And uh, you're bleeding out a little bit of performance. 
Like if we know that you can lift 20 to 40 pounds more, some guys get even more out of this belt, then I say, why not use it? You know, but keep in mind, I'm advanced and I got great gains without using it. So I'm not saying you have to buy this thing and I'm not sponsored by belt companies, just so you know, but maybe I should, right? But yeah, that's why your boy decided to get a belt. Again, it's nothing magical. You still got to have good form. You still got to have your programming on point. But I got it for the overload benefits, specifically for the rack pulls and the partials and the bench press tightness and all that shit. And that's why I got it, okay? So give me your feedback down below. Do you train beltless or do you train with a belt? I want to know your feedback. Like how long have you been lifting? When did you start using a belt? What differences did you notice? In particular, I want to hear from the power lifters. All you guys who compete in powerlifting, I want to know how much does a belt add to your lift? Give me your feedback down below and I'll talk to you all next time.